Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a photo stacking tutorial. So this is going to help reduce noise in your images, especially uh, when you're shooting the Milky Way. So first thing you want to do is open up Adobe Bridge and find your raw files. And then once you locate those, you want to select all of them by pressing on one and then hit Control A. And then you'll right click open with Adobe Photoshop. And when you click on this, it's going to open up Adobe, and it's also going to open up Adobe Camera Raw. And now I can actually edit the raw files. So the first thing I want to do is enable the lens correction. And in this case, I was using the Sigma 35 millimeter art lens. So you can see there's a bit of vignetting. Uh, we can also do remove our chromatic aberration. In this case, it doesn't look like it's doing too much, uh, but I'll leave it on anyway. Now, if we change through our white balances, we can see each one has a pretty significant effect on the Milky Way. Um, these all don't look very good though, so I'm gonna go back to the normal white balance. And just so I can really fine tune it, I'm gonna increase my saturation all the way to 100. And now I'm just gonna scroll through until the Milky Way looks just about right. And then I'll drop my saturation back down for now. I'll just give the image some contrast. And uh, I'm gonna bring up the highlights a little bit, make the Milky Way pop out a little bit more. Uh, we don't really want to bring the shadows up too much. It doesn't look like it's doing anything anyway. And I normally like to increase the whites quite a bit when I shoot my Milky Way photos. Now we can increase the saturation again. Just I personally like to have a lot of color in my Milky Way images. So if we go to the HSL slider, this allows us to increase the saturation on just one color channel, which is great. So now, since I like a lot of blues in this image, I can just increase the saturation on the blue channel. And this is also, we can change the hues. So if any of our color channels don't look exactly right, we can tweak the hue so it looks good. And so I like to just scroll through all these different colors that are prominent in the image and just really fine tune them. And that looks about good there. And it looks like there's not really even any yellow in the image, so I'll just put that back to zero. And then there's also a, this split toning. Now I never actually used to use this, but um, Lately, I've been using a lot to fix skin tones, and I found it works pretty good for landscape images as well, just to kind of remove any kind of color tint in the image. So if I zoom in closer, you'll be able to see just how much effect it's going to have. And make sure you increase the saturation first before you start messing with the hue, otherwise you won't see anything. Uh, and then once you get the, the color looking right, you just slowly increase the saturation until it looks good. And I don't want to overdo it too much, so if we jump back, that looks pretty good. Again, same thing for the shadows. In this case, I want to make them a little bit more blue than they were. So, that looks pretty good there. I'll just add a little bit more blue. Not that much, just a little bit. Now what I want to do is select all of my images and hit synchronize. And you can see this is going to synchronize all the settings we just changed. And now it's going to apply our edits to every image that we took. So you can see they're all pretty much identical. Now make sure you click select all again and then click save images. And now you want to find your folder you're working in. I already went ahead and made a JPEG folder for these files. If you haven't already, uh, you can do that now. And we'll select that. And in this case, we only have 20 images, so we'll use a two digit number, start at zero, 01. And you can also change the quality here. I leave mine at high, it works fine enough. And then when we got all that squared away, we'll hit save. 
And now we can see down here, it's going to go through all 21 photos. And now we can just sit and wait. All right, and once this is finally done, you'll see the little icons gone. So now we can hit, click the Done button. And that'll close us out of Adobe Camera Raw, and it'll bring us right into Photoshop. And now, if we go up to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And what this is going to do is allow us to find the JPEG files we just saved. And then from there, we're going to have Photoshop align all of those photos. So they're all lined up the same, so the stars are in the same place in each photo. Again, click on your image, select all. So again, make sure you click the automatically align source images checkbox and then hit OK. And now we'll wait and Photoshop again is just going to try and align these. Now, this is a critical thing to keep in mind. I took this using a 35 millimeter lens and for whatever reason, the Sigma works great for this because um, the images and the stars themselves don't move very much over the course of in this case, 20 photos. Now, I've never really had any success using a wide angle lens, like a 14 millimeter lens. Whenever Photoshop tries to auto align, it does a horrible job and nothing ever lines up. So uh, this photo stacking method, in my experience, works best, works best with a 35 millimeter lens. Uh, so keep that in mind if you go out and do uh, wide angle shots and you try and do this method, they might not work out. And trying to align them by hand is a huge pain because you have to rotate each one and move it slightly. Um, so just be careful about that. At the very first thing is select all my layers and then go down and change the blending mode to lighten. And this kind of shows us how much difference there is on each frame. For example, if this was the wide angle shot I was mentioning, this would not look this good. We can see there's hardly any difference. So we know that Photoshop align the images properly. Make sure all my photos are still selected. Uh, convert to smart object. And now we can go up to the toolbar and uh, go over to layer. And then we go down to smart objects. And we want to do the stack mode. And we're going to put that to median. And what median does basically just looks at the noise on all those images and uh, it's able to find the random noise and essentially remove it. So this is what you do if you're doing macro photography or something where you're shooting a high ISO and you're able to take multiple images one after the other without anything changing. Uh, this is a great method to reduce noise. So once this finishes, if we zoom in all the way, we'll be able to see just how much noise it got rid of. And the more images you take, of course, the better the final image will be. So in this case, I only did 20. Generally, that's plenty. Again, these photos were taken at ISO 6400. So that's kind of my upper limit for ISO when I'm shooting Milky Way. And again, if we zoom all the way in here now, it looks pretty, pretty smooth. Now, if I go back to my history, and you can see that's the difference before we did the median stack and after, before and after. So um, again, if we zoom in, there's a huge difference. And again, this is only just 20 photos. And this is plenty. I mean, our image looks pretty clean right now. And if you're able to get like 50 plus photos, you can actually start bringing out more detail. There was one time I shot the Milky Way with a 100 millimeter lens. And I took, I think, just over 50 images. And I was able to get a lot of detail out of the photos. So hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. Thanks.